may you please be standing as we do the Pathfinder Pledge in Law. Loving, Loving the Lord, Lord my God, God I, I will daily seek his presence, show friendship to others, and keep me love my law and, and honour my country. The Pathfinder Law is for me to look for the good in others and to do my best, love and respect my family, be thankful for what I have, preserve God's creation, take care of my health, be involved in my church, and go where he sends me. everyone my name is Natalia and I'd like you all to be welcome to church today as our special 10-year anniversary reunion um, we want to welcome our district directors Alan and Brooke thank you for coming today we would like to give a super special welcome to Sean and Kara who had a dream of this amazing club 10 years ago and they made it reality and put God at the center of the club they watched it grow we appreciate Pastor Graham and Daniela's leadership in our club. Then five years ago, our awesome leader, Phil, took over with his lovely wife, Andrea, by his side. We thank everyone who has had a leadership role in this church and in this club. And we thank you for the church and their support and prayers. And we'd like you all to be welcome to um, church today. All right, church, why don't we stand? We're going to sing a couple of songs as we start. I'm going to invite our singers to come up the front. We're going to start with uh, a beautiful song that you will all know called Amazing Grace. And it's the reason we're here, right? It's by the grace of God that we're here. So we're going to start and, yeah, make that our song as we, as we kick off this morning. Oh, 
singing with us church we've got another song we're going to do now and this is one that might be a bit new but it's all to do with our theme for this year as a church our theme is walking the way and as a pathfinder club we've been talking about the topic of the journey so at our camps we've been unpacking that and looking through that and that's what this next song is all about it's called the journey so if you don't know it that's okay but would you just reflect on the words as, as we sing this one to discover Your love is a sacred place I want to live forever You are a treasure deep I want you to cover All of my days I will follow you
so much for singing, church. You can grab a seat. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to church. Uh, today's offerings for the local church, so give big and support us <laughs> if you enjoy everything that we do here. Uh, yeah. Um, please bow your heads for prayer. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you that we could be here, and please let people give generously. Love you, Lord. Amen. Sabbath day that we can come together and worship with you here. We also come together in celebration for our Gokos Central Pathfinders Club. 
We give thanks to you, Father, for Pastor Sean and Cara who have sent the club up for 10 years ago, having faith that you would bless us with the children joining, and they have. We thank you for Graham and Danielle, and we also look on to directorship next. We thank you and ask a special blessing on our present director, Phil, along with Andrea, Tyler, and Amy, for the continued hard work and effort that they bring to the club. Thank you, Father, for our level directors and additional volunteers who also give up their time and energy for Pathfinders. We, we ask, dear Father, that you, are, you be with us, with every head bowed here today and their onla online. Families and their families they represent, please bring healing and comfort to those who need it. We ask you to bless this Pathfinder service and all who take part. Thank you, for, thank you God, for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we please get Pastor Sean to come up? We're going to ask you some questions, if that's okay. And Kara, So first, first question we want to ask you is, why did you start up Pathfinders? That is a very good question. Some people would have thought it was a great idea, and uh, there are others that wondered. But uh, we actually went to my home church down at Avenue Memorial, which was a real competitor of Cara's club. She was a college church Pathfinders growing up. And they had their investor chair, and there was only was about 150 kids invested. And at the time, we were trying to grow children's ministry here at this church. And we went, oh, this seems like a bad idea, Cara, but do you think we should start a club? <laughs> she was enthusiastic about it. No, but uh, we knew. So when we came back, it wasn't just us, to be honest, because when we came back, people like the Mays, uh, the Renfrews, and a number of other key families went, you know what, we need to do this for our kids as well. So I think in our first year, we actually had as many adults as we had kids. I think we had 18, 18 kids, Pathfinders, and I think we had about 18 or 19 staff. Have you got anything you want to say, Cara? Wait till we get in the car. The next question is, what has been your favourite memory from Pathfinders at Gold Coast Central? Uh, to be honest, I was looking at a lot of those photos and uh, I can't remember if I get it right, Warren, but was it 517? I think it was. I'll never forget that time because uh, we were on a camporee and uh, we stayed at Rockhampton on the way. And we were meant to get up at 617 and Warren woke us up at 517. Uh, so we were well and truly early for camp registration at Hill Bilby Camporee. But no, that, that was fun. But I think, to be honest, just the interaction and when we see those photos, seeing how big some of you have got. Uh, and that's what Pathfinders is about. It's, it's about you guys. It's not about us. Cara, do you have anything you want to say? Thank you. Okay. The other one is, what is one thing that you believe that people learn too late? Say that again, sorry. So what's one thing you believe that people t don't learn until it's too late? They don't learn until it's too late. Well, as a male, I'm probably learning to shut up a bit more. Um, is that right, Cara? Thanks for that. To be honest, I think the, I think the biggest thing is, is not having the courage to actually start something. Uh, in Christianity, you can believe all you like, but you've got to put it into action. And that's what Pathfinders is all about. 
uh, you know, Alan, who's here today, uh, one of the DDs, without him we wouldn't have a club. And it wasn't just them, it was people from Springwood who helped us out, and people from Reedy Creek Club who helped us out. So it's, it, that'd be the biggest thing is, is, is too often we uh, don't have the courage to actually just step out and do. Yeah, that was a really good answer. But look, we'll work with it. Is that okay, Cara? Thank you. Thank you, guys.
be still running through my head I wonder how much different things would be Dear younger me Some speech about how to get the most out of your life Or do I go deep and try to change The choices that you make Cause they're the choices that made me And even though I love this crazy life Sometimes I wish it was a smooth ride Dear young me I'm not sure what the tradition is now, but uh, normally the kids would come down the front. You guys can stay where you are. But if there's some other kids, come and join me. And I want to tell you a story today about a journey that I went on. Now, I know there's kids there hiding. Come on. You're waiting for music. I cannot sing you up here. It'll be terrible. Please come up. Please come up. Good. We've got at least one of us. Good job. Come on, you, Kobe. Away, okay, all four of us. This is good. Well, today I want to tell you a story about going on a hike. Now, it's a bit of a journey. Now, if we could go to the one photo that I think I actually have. Now, this photo is taken at a place down in South New South Wales, and it is called The Castle. So, where where you can see those three boys sitting. I couldn't find my photo, but when I was 19, I had a photo in exactly the same place as those boys. In fact, I think I had a flannelette shirt on as well, but that's definitely not me. But to get to the castle, you, I was living in Newcastle, and it was a six-hour drive. So we drove six hours. We finished work. And, and we, we drove six hours, hours and we got there at 10 o'clock at night. Now, where the car was parked was down, right down the bottom where you can see all that dark green trees. The car park was down the bottom there somewhere. And we parked and then we started to walk. Now, we had to be really prepared when we went on this walk. We had a backpack. We had all our food in the backpack. We had our sleeping bag. We had some spare clothes, which 
for boys, that wasn't too much. Might have been a pair, pair of shorts and a shirt if you're lucky. And we had our water bottles and we had to wear a torch. And we brought lots of spare batteries because we were going to hike all night to get just down right where that boy in the green is sort of holding his neck. We camp just down the bottom of where those cliffs are that you can see in the distance. And we hiked all the way up there. Now, you would have liked this because most kids love to climb. But when I was your age, I got scared of heights. Really scared of heights. You can ask my mum. She'll tell you I was a bit scared of heights. Definitely a little bit of a wussy boy. But to get just to the bottom of the castle, you had to actually hang on to a rope and pull yourself up a cliff and just hold on to the rope. So you weren't connected to the rope. You had to hold on to it. And at night, I didn't seem as scared of heights because I couldn't see how far down it was. So we climbed up and eventually we got to there. But while we were climbing, it started to rain. And you would have thought that being a pathfinder for like my entire life, I would have remembered to bring a raincoat. No, I didn't. I forgot the raincoat. So we got up there and the good thing was all my mates forgot their raincoats too. And as we opened up our backpacks, we noticed our sleeping bag was wet, our lay-down mat was wet, and all the spare clothes we brought were wet, and our food, we weren't rookies when it came to our food, our food was dry because we put them in little bags. And we got up there, so we at least had food and dry toilet paper. So we had two things that were dry. And we got up there, we were wet, soaking wet, and we were tired because it took us nearly seven hours to hike from where our cars were parked to the bottom of the castle. Now, I went online this week to find out how hard that hike is because my mates just said, you'll be right, it's fun. And I went and had a look and it is one of the most difficult bushwalks in all of the east coast of Australia. So if, when I send my mates next time, I'm going to punch them. So we hiked up to the bottom there, and the next day we went up a place called Monolith Valley, and it is so beautiful, kids. It is amazing. And then we climbed up to here, and on the Saturday, right about now, a long time ago, we sat on those rocks and looked at the castle, and it looked just like that. It doesn't look amazing. Some of you would have never even heard of it. It was one of the most beautiful places, certainly in Australia. Well, Sunday morning, as soon as the sun got up, we dried our stuff during the day, so we had one night's sleep. And then we decided to climb up the castle. Now, what you can't see is that those cliff faces on the side are about 200 metres. So those cliff faces are very, very, very steep. And to get up there, you had to actually climb up. Just to the left of where that boy in the green's holding his neck, you'd actually climb your way up to the top. Now, I was 19 and I thought I was really brave because I'd done pathfinders and abseiling and had to go up those things. So I was starting to deal with the fear of heights. And as we started to climb up towards the top, I was only about as far as from where you kids are to about the roof and there was a section and I did not like this section because what you had to do, and it was on this side, there was a big cliff all the way down to the bottom, my impending death, I thought, and you put your foot here and you put your hand on the rock and there was a little ledge about the same size as your shoe and you could put your foot on it. And then you'd have to actually transfer your weight to your right foot and then hold on to a rock above you. Now, my mates are way braver than me because they're not scared of heights. But while I was looking up, I was okay. But when I put my foot down and had to actually put my weight on it, I looked down. Now, this is if you're scared of heights. The looking down bit's the scary bit. Looking up's all right. Looking down. Ooh, very bad. So I looked down and I could see birds flying way below me. I could see this cliff face and the wind blowing up the cliff face and then I could see right out, like you can see in that photo, into the distance. And I thought, Sean, if you put your foot on there, you're going to die. Now, you laugh about it, but I thought I was going to die. So I put my foot and I started to shake. 
and I had one mate behind me and all the rest had already scrambled up to the top and they were on that nice flat section of the top. And you know what? I piked out. You might not even know what the word piked mean. But I was scared. So I wouldn't go any further. And I didn't. And I actually went back and sat down on a rock and waited for my mates who got up the top and had a look. Now, 12 months later, one of my mates came up to me and said, we're going to do the castle again. Are you going to chicken out this time? I was trying to be a man. I'm like, no. Maybe? I'm not sure. So we did it again. And that day, as we were climbing up there and I got to that section where you had to do it, I thought to myself, what's the worst thing that can happen? Don't look down. Always look up. And you know what? I put my foot on it and I thought, don't look down. Your foot's on the ledge. You're fine. Just look up. I put my foot on it. I grabbed hold of the rock. I think if that rock, um, it was a strong rock. And I held on to that rock and then my fingers just went into it like this and I scrambled up to the top. And I wish I had the photo to show you guys when we were up the top because my mates might have been giving me a hard time like I was a weakling or something. But I got up there. Now, the lesson that we can learn today is there's things in life, on our journey of life, we can be scared about. But the most important thing I can say to you kids is this. Always look up. Because when we look up, we look up to Jesus. Thank you for listening. You can go and grab your seats. Uh, going down, I didn't look...
We have a couple of uh, young people that are going to be sharing the message with us today. So I want to invite Nasiah up onto the stage first. Can we give Nasiah a huge round of applause as she makes her way up? And we'll just see if we can get these heights all good for you. Nasiah, can you tell us, just into this one here, have you ever spoken to a church before up the front? No. No. And uh, church, church, what do we what do we want to say to the side? We want to encourage her. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Put that down there for you. All right. We'll get this mic sorted. Just give us a little test one two. Hello. That'll do. Awesome. Take it away, Nasai. Hi, my name is Nasaya, and I'm going to be talking about Joseph and how. His story relates to us. But before I start, let's pray. Dear loving Father, we are thankful for your words, your love, and your grace. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Joseph was the son of Jacob and Rachel. He had 12 brothers, but he was the only son at the time born to Rachel, making him Jacob's favorite. His brothers were jealous of him and sold him to slavery. I'm sure many of us at times have felt betrayed by others, and even been hurt by our own family, especially siblings. Joseph then is taken to a foreign country, Egypt. At this point, he has been betrayed, he has been sold to slavery, and now he is in a foreign country with strange gods and customs and a whole nother language. He must have, he must have felt so alone and scared. Sometimes we can be in situations where we may feel the same. It could be starting a new school, or even moving to another country. Or you even may be getting bullied, or feel like an outcast. But as we continue Joseph's story, you'll find out how these situations are overcome. Joseph is brought by Potiphar, one of Potiphar's, I mean Pharaoh's officials. The Lord was with Joseph, so he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. Then Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Joseph, but Joseph would not betray his master, so she lied, and then he was sent to prison. 
But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him and gave him success in whatever he did. Through this, we see how Joseph overcame these things, and it was because the Lord was with him. I find Joseph's story inspiring and also relatable, as my own journey came with some trials. When I was still in my mom's tummy, my mom was told that my brain would not develop properly. I would not likely live, and if I did, I would be severely disabled. But my mom prayed to God to save me, and he did just that. As you can see, I am alive and capable, because the Lord was with me. So my mom... So my mum named me Messiah, meaning miracle of God. Joseph was also blessed with gifts, and God helped him interpret dreams. Because he was able to interpret the Pharaoh's dream, he was put in charge of all of Egypt under the Pharaoh. This is how caring God is. He was with Joseph through everything, and Joseph went from a slave to being in charge of all of Egypt. So when you feel like you're alone or scared, just trust in God, because he says, I will never leave nor forsake you. This isn't even the best part of Joseph's story. He is now in charge of um, he is now in charge, and the Pharaoh's dream, which Joseph interpreted, is now happening, and there is famine going on in the lands. But they have stored grain to supply in the famine. Then Joseph's brothers came to buy grain, being sent by their father Jacob. They did not recognize Joseph, but he recognized them. How do you think you would feel if you were in Joseph's position? Would you be angry, or would you want to hurt them as much as they hurt you? I think I'd be very angry. And being in a position of power, how would you handle it? Well, this is where we really see the beauty of God's love. In the end, Joseph forgave his brothers, and he told them, Now, do not be distressed. Do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. So then it would not... It was not you who sent me here, but God. God had the plan all along. Sometimes our journey may not seem fair or may be hard, but just know that God is with you and he has a plan for you. Thanks so much, this side. That was so beautiful and so well spoken as well. I'm going to invite our second speaker up now, Jasper. Can you please come up, mate? Let's give him a huge round of applause as well. Jasper's going to share a bit more about the story of Joseph. So, I'll just see the mic. Let's go, mate. All yours. Good morning, church. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how God shines in our daily lives even in our toughest moments. Joseph is a great example of this, and we are going to look at the story today. Now, Joseph was the favourite son. I know that because I am the favourite son. Sorry, Oscar. <laughs> what else can we learn from Joseph? This brings me to my first point. It's important to remember that God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life, just like he did for Joseph's. Genesis 30, chapter 37, verses 5 to 9, shows that God can have a, had a plan for Joseph and told him in two dreams. Not everyone has dreams like Joseph, but still has a plan for everyone. God tells us this in one of my favourite Bible verses, Jeremiah chapter. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, plans not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. One of my favourite role models is Bethany Hamilton, who wrote the book called Soul Surfer, which is also a movie. Bethany is a Christian in Hawaii and always went to church. She had a plan for... She had a plan for her life to be a world champion surfer. But like Joseph, things didn't go the way it should have been. The, this brings me to my second point. Even if you are a Christian, tough times still happen. Even though God had a plan for Joseph's life, he still had some tough times in his life. For example, his own brothers threw him into a massive hole 
they sold him to be a slave. He ended up, up as a slave in Egypt, far from his home. And then he even went to jail. It is strange that even though J Joseph followed God, he had dreams about his future. He still had these terrible moments though. Even though many people at church here today are Christians, we still have some very tough times. Even though many people... Oh, sorry. This is the same as Bethany Hamilton who spoke about but we, as we spoke about before. At the age of 13, she was, she was out surfing when a tiger shark bit her left arm off. She was lucky to survive, but somehow she did. What, could go, what good could come from Joseph being sold as a slave? What good could come from Bethany nearly dying from a shark attack? This brings me to my last point. God shines in our challenges. It might seem strange, but God shines in our toughest times. Look at all those terrible things happened. But God was still with him. And God still had a plan. Pharaoh had a dream that no one else could explain. But Joseph could. He had a gift to understand dreams. So Pharaoh made him second in command and got to see his family again. And he was only 17. God's plans are way better than Joseph's or his family could ever imagine. The same is, a, is for all of you. Since her shark, since when Bethany Hamilton's shark attack, she learned how to live with one arm. Even more amazingly, she, became, she began surfing again and she did re really well in lots of competitions. But most importantly, she learned how to live... Sorry. She, she became way more famous for her courage and bravery than ever becoming a world champion surfer. As she got to share... And she got to share God's word with so many people. This goes to show that God can do amazing things even, in the, even when bad things are happening. In fact, it is only when we need God the most we can find out how great he is. Thank you for listening. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing, guys. And, um, Yes, it's, it's such, such a such a beautiful story, isn't it? The story of Joseph in the end, right? But it's not a, it's not a straightforward path to get there. And um, I think that the big thing I get out of that story is there's so much unexpected that happens, right? Um, so many unexpected turns and twists and things go wrong constantly. And maybe you know yourself, you felt a bit like that over the last few months or the last year or so. You know that things just keep going wrong. They go from bad to worse. You know. But, but, I, but I hope that just as Nasir and Jasper have shared today, that it, the story of Joseph can be an encouragement to us. That, that it doesn't matter what the challenges are, but God is able to work in them. God is able to work through them. You know, he promises in his word he's able to work all situations out for good. And it's easy for us today to, to look at the stories of, of people like Joseph and say, wow, God was so present in his life. You know, why doesn't God seem as present in my life? And it's a question I've wrestled with a bit as well. It's like, you know, why was God so actively involved in these stories in Scripture? But I don't always feel that that's the case in my own life. Maybe you've wrestled with that question too. Someone recently shared with me that it wasn't just that God was with Joseph, but Joseph was with God as well. It wasn't, that, it wasn't just that God was blessing Joseph and, and, and he was supporting him and helping him through those things. But, but, but we see in Joseph's life the way that he followed God in spite of his challenges as well. And there's a certain resilience there and, and a certain um, passion about his faith that we want for, for all of our pathfinders. That's why this pathfinder ministry exists. You know, we want young people to, to grow up in an environment where, you know, they do face challenges, but they face them together. You know, and they're able to build the kind of resilience and the kind of faith that's going to set them up for a life of following Jesus. And that's what pathfinders is all about. There's, there's one verse I just want to share as we kind of close up this, this section of the program. And it's, it's from John chapter 15. And we've, we've, we just keep coming back to this chapter a lot as a church recently. But it comes back to that idea of us remaining with God. And, and Jesus says here, he says, Remain in me 
if, if I also remain in you. And Jesus, Jesus promises to remain in us, and he invites us, he says, remain in me too. And, and I look at the story of Joseph and I think, wow, you know, you know if God, God can turn a situation of literally being betrayed by your family, family thrown into a pit, sold it to a foreign country as a slave, you know, how much can he do through, through you today? So church, I, I, want, I want you to be challenged, I want you to be inspired by the story of Joseph and the stories that have been shared by our pathfinders. If you don't know any kids in Pathfinders at the moment, I challenge you, it's a great opportunity today to do that. They're all, you can, you can see them really clearly because we've all got these shirts on. So go have a conversation with them. Ask them, hey, what's, what do you love about Pathfinders? You know, what, is, what have you learned about Jesus through that? Because these kids are doing incredible things in their lives and it's so good to, to see them up here worship leading and speaking and preaching. And um, I'm just so encouraged to, to be a part of this journey with, with Gold Coast Central Pathfinders. And, and I hope that you sense as I do um, just how incredible it is that God has been working in this community. You know, since the club was started, 18 kids grown to this many, you know, and there are more as well that aren't here today as well. And um, I'm just so blessed by being a part of this ministry, and I challenge you as well. You know, if you have kids or um, you want to invest in these guys, you know, come chat to feel or to myself, and we'd love to have you involved. I wanted to do something just before we wrap up, and that's if, if you have ever been involved in Pathfinders here at Gold Coast Central, could you stand to your feet? So whether you've come as a Pathfinder, whether you've helped out, whether you've supported... Just stand to your feet. That, that includes everyone that's currently in it. So stand to your feet. If you've ever been involved in Gold Coast Central Pathfinders. Pathfinders, can you look around behind you? Can you give these guys a huge round of applause? I hope you can sense as I do that being involved in Pathfinders and this ministry here isn't just something that can be done by the people wearing these shirts. It's something that the whole church is a part of. Um, and, and we've talked a lot about the kids today and about you know, the great things they've been able to do and be a part of. Um, but at the end of the day, it takes a whole church to, to have a ministry like Pathfinders and one that has thrived as it has. So um, it's, it's, it's a great ministry to be a part of. If, if you haven't considered it before, I challenge you to consider getting involved um, because not only do we learn about Jesus, do we grow, do we get to do some cool adventures, but it's so much fun. It is so much fun to be journeying with people, you know, to be going through these activities, to be learning about Jesus together. And church, I just want to uh, offer a prayer over our club, over our churches as we finish up for today. But before I do that, there's one more thing. Sorry, I already said that twice. <laughs> One more thing, and this is a young man who's uh, given his life to Jesus, and he's actually been a part of this club, right? And his name's Matthew, and I'm going to invite Matt Flowergy to come up to this stage. I'm not going to make you say anything, mate, but we're going to give you a huge round of applause as he comes up. Thanks for coming up, Matt. I know you didn't want to say too much, so I won't make you say heaps, but you're just such a good-looking young man. I feel we have to get you up here so everyone can see you. Um, mate, how long have you been at this church for? been a part of the church? 16 years. How old are you? 19. So since he was three, right? So probably about this big. And this young man has, has grown up in this church, in this community, gone through Pathfinders, right? Been a, been a part of all that, you know, just incredible. And he's made a decision to follow Jesus and he wants to get baptized, which I think is, is amazing. And uh, we've had to change the time for the baptism a few times because I don't know if you've heard, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but unfortunately we're going to lockdown at 4 p.m. today. Uh, so sorry to be the bearer of bad news if you've just heard that. But we originally, we had 4.30 and then 4 and then now 2 p.m. Okay, so 2 p.m. Talabudra, is that correct? Yep, Talabudra Creek, 2 p.m. Um, Matt would love you guys to be there. We'd love to support him as a church family. And um, mate, we'd, we'd love to pray for you and, and pray that, you know, you might be an inspiration to everyone here. You know, of, of what it means to, to live a life following Jesus, mate. And um, we're just so excited you've made this decision. So, church, um, if you would, wouldn't mind joining me, we're just going to reach out our hands and, and just reach out towards Matt. And we're just going to offer a prayer of blessing over him as a church. We just want to say, yeah, we want to support you in this decision. We want to bless you and pray for you now, mate. So let's, let's reach out our hands, church. We're just going to pray for him. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the life of Matt. Thank you so much. You've been working on his heart and that you've been leading him towards you. We're so encouraged. By seeing his journey, you know, there are people here that have seen him since he was knee height up until now. He's probably taller than most of them. But God, you, um, you've you been leading in his life. And I just pray that he might, uh, yeah, sense in a very real way that this church is behind him and supporting him, Lord. And each of these hands raised represent a person saying, yes, I want to support this young man as he continues to follow Jesus. And may the same go for each of our pathfinders, Father. 
Lord, I pray that you would bless Matt. I pray you would bless this Pathfinder Club. I pray you would bless this church. That you would have your will done in each of their lives. Lord, this is my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Awesome. Bless you, mate. Thanks so much. So we're just going to close with one more song, I believe. So if I can invite the bands to come back up. And we'll finish off with a song. Why don't we stand, church? We're going to sing this song together. Jesus, Jesus.
coming today um, for the Pathfinder Club, all my Pathfinder um, staff. I uh, just like to thank you guys for all the effort and to everyone that's put in over the last 10 years. Um, it's been a big journey for you, the church members. Um, it wouldn't have got going without you guys. I've heard stories from Sean and Carr about the generosity of people in the church um, with time, with financial sacrifice. Um, so this club wouldn't be there to the, here today the way it is without the strength of the community of the church. So I'd just like to thank each and every one of you for your continued support and, and uh, pray that it will uh, just continue to go. Pathfinder, all the Pathfinders yourselves, you guys are awesome. I just love working with you guys. And just the talent that's been on display it just amazes me, it blows my mind. So... Um, so unfortunately, as Lockie alluded to, uh, we're in lockdown from four o'clock today. So Gold Coast Got Talent uh, has been postponed. So we'll do, uh, we'll organise that uh, once we know a bit more about this lockdown and how long it's going to last. So keep an eye out for that. But the good news from that is I only had about 15 acts. I need at least another five or six. So you've got more time to prepare. Okay. So please let me know when you're in, if you're interested. Um, it would be great to get a few more acts together. That includes some of you talented guys that I see on up here today, Pathfinders. Um, yep. So just uh, for those you know, we have the prayer corner down over here. So we'll have our um, elders down here. Uh, anyone that needs a prayer, please come and um, and we'll have a prayer over you this morning. Um, Apart from that, have a great week, be safe, and we'll see you next week.